Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Small School Districts Association Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you all here. Uh, we have six wonderful institutions here to, uh, to share a little bit more about what each of them do. Uh, but before we kick things off, I do want to make sure that you understand the format of the session as well as how to ask your questions. So my name is Isabella. I'll be your facilitator throughout the next 45 minutes. Each of the six institutions will have six minutes to present a little bit about their institution. Um, and then we will have some time for questions throughout the whole session. So no need to save your questions for the very end of the session. You can send them through this Q&A button that you see down at the bottom of your screen at any point, even while institutions are presenting. So don't save them towards the end. Feel free to use that Q&A throughout our presentations today. Uh, your camera and microphone are off and they'll remain off throughout the full session so they cannot see or hear you. Uh, but that Q&A is really your best way to interact with our college representatives today. There are two more hours of programming after this session concludes. So feel free to check out uh, the additional sessions, sign up for them if you're interested in exploring further and you haven't already. And a note that this session is being recorded. So if you need to return to any of this information, you'll be able to find the recording online at strivescan.com backslash SSDA. Uh, and so with that, we'll go ahead and get started with our institutional presentations and we'll kick things off with EHL. Good morning, everybody. My name is Daniel Flores. And I'm here to talk to you about EHL. So on your screen, what you actually see is part of our 3-2-1 model. So the three stands for the different locations that we have. On the left-hand side is going to be Lausanne, Switzerland. In the French-speaking part, in the middle is Pasug, Switzerland, in the Swiss-German-speaking part. And on the right-hand side is Singapore. First thing to note, program is taught entirely in English. You do not need to know the local language to study at EHL. The two stands for pathways. To make it simple, one goes directly into our um, hospitality program. The second one goes into more culinary arts, which leads us to our one. We offer one bachelor's degree. We make life super simple. It's a bachelor's of science in international hospitality management. Now, the first thing I want you to know is hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants. Once again, hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants. This is the service industry, which is one in 10 jobs globally. To make it super simple, the only difference between studying business and studying hospitality is if you hate people, study business. Now, so you get a better idea of the composition of our students. We have over 2,900 undergrad students, 3,300 total students, and they come from over 120 different nationalities. What you may notice between myself and the people in the picture, which are real students, is that this is our dress code. We wear suits every single day. Now, it, about 84% of our students know three or more languages, and it's not to freak you out in case you don't, but the great thing is that's embedded in our curriculum. You will know at least three languages by the time that you graduate. Quick history, we started off as the world's first hotel school in 1893. We then transitioned to becoming ranked as the world's number one hospitality and leisure management program. We've been ranked that three years in a row, and we're also the first and only school with the Michelin star training restaurant three years in a row. We also have dual accreditation by the Swiss and US government. So if you want to work or continue your education anywhere around the world, you can do that with our degree. And just so you get an idea of what the campus looks like, this is one of them plus the rendering behind me. This is our Lausanne campus. We have two brand new apartment buildings, three brand new dorms, and on your screen is actually going to be the sports facility. We have, we're gonna have an indoor gym, indoor pool, indoor spa, college life is rough, you need your mani pedis, boom, you get that right on campus. But this is also the quintessential European experience. In a three hour flight from Geneva, you're in 36 different countries, not cities, not states, countries. So if you want to hop on over and have your pizza pasta in Italy or your tapas in Spain, do it. Now, if you want a different experience, we also have our Singapore campus. Singapore is like the Switzerland of Asia. It's small in size and filled with expats. So you get an international experience on and off campus. This is also the business hub of Asia. So if you're looking to explore the Asian market, this is a great place to be. In a three hour flight, you're in 17 different countries. So if you want to hit up the Maldives, Phuket, Ho Chi Minh, you can do that. Now to get an idea of what we offer. In the four year program, we offer one year of 
internship. It's broken up into two six month segments. The first six months of our program, you're switching off courses every week. We call them workshops. You're doing anything from making chocolates, making pastries, drinking wine, making cocktails, and then you clean toilets, you make beds, you learn French, you do inventory, you visit and eat at a three Michelin star restaurant. So the whole point is that you get experience providing great experience. And the best way to provide experience is by you doing it. This is not theory. So you do that for six months in Lausanne, Switzerland. And then immediately after that, you have your first six month internship anywhere around the world. So in your first year, you're in up to two countries. You come back for three semesters, you take business courses, language courses, and hospitality courses. We offer German, French, Russian, Mandarin, Spanish. Then immediately after that, you do your second six month internship, same deal, anywhere around the world. And this time you're applying what you just learned over the past three semesters. And then finally, in your last year, you're taking advanced management theory courses, elective courses, and you actually finish off the program being a consultant. You solve a problem for a real company either by yourself with up to five other people. You decide, hey, I actually want to develop my own business plan. We have a startup incubator on campus to help you do that. Or you do a research thesis. No matter what option you choose, you have at least one expert coach guiding you. And then you present this to your entire graduating class. A great thing, 96% of our students within six months of graduation get a job. And that's the highest of any school offering this program worldwide. Now, once again, hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants. 47% of our alumni go into those traditional fields, but because this is a business program, you can do anything with a business degree you can do with a hospitality. Banking, accounting, NGOs, education, healthcare, health and beauty, luxury goods, retail, real estate. This is a vast degree with job opportunities, but also with employability worldwide, which leads me to our alumni network. Over 30,000 alumni working in over 150 countries. If you are looking for a global career, this is definitely a great opportunity. And once again, to prove the point, these are companies hiring our students, whether it is for internships or for full-time jobs. And you will notice that they are not just hotels and restaurants. Finally, we have a three-phase admissions process. We are on the Common App, and then we do accept financial aid and offer our own um, financial aid in addition to FAFSA. If you have any questions, you can take a screenshot here. This is my contact info, and thank you so much for your time. Wonderful, thank you so much, Daniel, for sharing a little bit more about EHL. I will now head on over to University of Roehampton. Great. Okay, hopefully that's shared up there. Hi everyone, my name is Haley Drogas and I am the Regional Manager for North America at University of Roehampton, London. Oops. There we go. So a little bit about Roehampton. We are considered London's campus university. We have a beautiful Parkland campus located in Southwest London. So quick commute into central London and you pretty much get best of both worlds. You get the true traditional university lifestyle and experience that Roehampton has to offer, but you are also in one of the best cities in the world, London. And um, in case you did not know, London is one of the best cities for students. There are over 500,000 students who study in London every year, and so many things around London are catered to the student experience. And in 2019, we were rated in the top 10 um, universities of London. So a few more facts and figures about Roehampton. Our bachelor's degrees are three years long because unlike in the United States, in the UK, they expect you to have already completed all of your basic um, math sciences, general ed courses. So when you apply to study with us for a bachelor's degree in the UK, you are applying not only to the university, but to that specific program that you're interested in. And uh, for that reason, our bachelors are only three years in length. So that alone saves you time and a lot of money. And we accept US federal aid. So we'll get more into that throughout the presentation, but I do like to make sure students know we are on FAFSA. And we have numerous scholarships available. A lot of our US students end up getting a merit-based scholarship to study with us. 
And we're so excited that the UK is bringing back the post-study work visa, meaning that after completing your degree with us in London, you can stay and work and live for up to two years on a visa provided, which is a really great opportunity and experience. And we have great accommodations available on campus and they are all singles, which I know is so different compared to a lot of US universities. So if you're someone where you're not sure if you want roommates, then coming to the UK might be right for you. And uh, just a few more facts and figures. We have approximately 141 nationalities on campus and of our 8,000 student population, 10% of those are international students and it's 20% if you include students from the EU countries. So here is a map to show you where we are located in proximity to central London. So you can see um, the little Big Ben icon and the cluster of other buildings all together. That's really considered central London. And we are the green building right down the River Tongues. And you can see us located right near Wimbledon. And if you scan that QR code, which is also on the next slide here, that QR code will take you to our spectacular new virtual tour of campus. And on this slide, you can also see a graphic of our beautiful Parkland campus. As you can see, we have two lakes, tons of outdoor space, which is very convenient during COVID right now to be able to get outdoors and take in some fresh air. And it's a great university living and just socializing. And I like to make it known that 66% of the research uh, done on our campus is of world-class standard. And in some departments, 100% of the research is of world-class. Now here's the list of our undergraduate courses. Just to touch on, we have seven academic departments and they are the School of Arts, Business, Education, Humanities, Life Sciences, Psychology, and Social Sciences. So, pretty much anything you can think of except for some STEM programs like engineering. Apart from those, we have pretty much everything you could think of. And in order to apply, you can either apply directly through our website for free, or we are also on the UCAS application. And for those of you that don't know what UCAS is, it's sort of like the Common App, but for the UK. And we do have rolling admissions as well. And in terms of entry requirements, most of our programs, some vary, but most of them require a, between a 2.8 to 3.0 um, to get into that program. And we are test optional. And just a few of our programs do require extra um, entry requirements. So if you're interested in life sciences or the English creative writing department, um, you will be required more. And we are very affordable. Like I said, our bachelor's degrees are only three years in length. So that alone is saving you a whole entire year of tuition and fees. Um, but on top of that, uh, the US average equivalent for studying with us for a whole year for tuition, um, rent, everything, you're looking at approximately 35,424. So very affordable compared to going to an out of state public school or to a private school. And as you can see, we have a lot of scholarships available and this doesn't even include all of them. And for accommodation, it's pretty much the most affordable rent you'll find in London on our beautiful campus right across from the Royal Park of Richmond. So it's definitely a great opportunity for students to thrive on campus. And we have a great um, social environment at the university as well. Everything from clubs and societies to nightlife, both on campus and off campus throughout London, tons of competitive sports. Sorry, there goes my timer. Um, pretty much anything you can think of to get that true traditional university experience you have available to you. And that brings me to the end. One more thing I just want to add is that beyond chatting with myself and my colleagues, Amanda and Bill, um, who are dedicated to US recruitment, you can scan that QR code right there and chat with current students through our Unibody platform as well. Thank you all so much for your time. Great, thank you so much for sharing a little bit more about University of Roehampton. Uh, before we head on over to our next institution, I do wanna make a very quick plug for that Q&A. And so if you have any questions about either of the institutions you've already heard from or about any of the ones that you're about to hear from, don't forget about that Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen. Our college representatives are happy to answer your questions throughout the session. So there's no need to save your questions till the end. Uh, but with that, we'll pass things off to University of East Anglia.
Thank you so much for that extra time, Isabella, to get everything set up. My name is Alana Stewart. I'm the regional manager for the University of East Anglia, and I am based in Michigan. The University of East Anglia is also known as UEA and was founded in 1963. So we're relatively young, but we've done a great job at establishing ourselves since that point. And we are now a world top 200 institution and within the UK top 25. We are a public campus-based research university. So the professors that you learn under are contributing to their fields and doing top level research. We do have a wide variety of subjects on offer, uh, over 160 undergraduate degrees that you can choose from. I'll show you a slide um, with some of the larger subject areas in a little bit. Um, but we have 17,000 students on our campus and about 17% of those are international from around the globe. We are located in Norwich, England, which is about an hour and a half northeast of London by train. We do have our own international airport in Norwich, so it's easily accessible. You can also get there from flying into one of the London airports and then taking a bus or a train up. That area, which is known as East Anglia, is beautiful countryside. So we have those rolling farmlands, also easy access to the British coastline there. It's about 30 minutes away from Norwich itself. The population, um, it is a smaller city at about 130,000 people, but with that, it is a shopping destination. Um, so there's a bunch of shopping areas downtown, um, an outdoor market with colored awnings, uh, also a ton of malls. We do have our own castle as well as two cathedrals. We're known as being an affordable city, as well as one of the best cities to live in for that area. And then we have one of the highest number of vegan restaurants per person in Norwich. Even if you're not a vegan, I just think this speaks to the eclectic nature and shows that there's a little bit of something for everybody in Norwich. And it is one of the reasons that we say that you should come to UEA. Um, on top of that, if you have seen the Netflix movie Jingle Jangle, uh, Norwich, the Elm Hill district was featured in that film in the snowball, in the snowball fighting scene. So a little bit of Hollywood for you there in Norwich, but it is really a quintessentially British experience for you. Our campus is about three miles from the proper city center, set on 320 acres of green space. Uh, so some of the features I'll point out are the sports parks. We have one of the largest sports park in Great Britain, and you can see the field pitches and courts, but there's also an Olympic sized swimming pool as well as a indoor rock climbing wall. We do have accommodation, which is guaranteed for first year international students. There's a variety of options due on budget uh, or depending on your budget. And then we also do have um, single spaces, which is very common in the UK, um, and also options to have your own bathroom. Um, there are a lot of kitchen facilities, so you're able to cook for yourself and keep, um, keep the cost of food down. Our student union features live music gigs as well as pubs. In a good year, we do get six or more live music, um, live music gigs for students to explore different music types and musicians. Our library is open 24 seven if you need a quiet place to study. And I always like to kind of end on the Sainsbury Center for Visual Arts, which is featured in the Avengers film. So if you've seen the Avengers films, you've actually seen UEA's campus. That is our museum on campus. Um, and then we do have uh, new, uh, new buildings on campus. So there is one called the New Science Building. Uh, that was on my first slide. It was dedicated by Dr. Jane Goodall. And then we have a new engineering facility for both engineers in the community as well as students kind of cross collaborate. And um, so there's that new emphasis on engineering um, for students who may want to study that. We are also known for creative writing and environmental science. We do well within business, economics, and international development. Our programs are standard three years long, but we do have the option in most of them to do a year abroad or a year in industry. While that does extend the program to a four, four years, you do not pay full tuition fees for that year abroad or year in industry. So it's still not as expensive um, as maybe you might be looking at spending in the US. You do need to know exactly what you want to study and you'll apply via the UCAS application. You can choose five UK programs or universities to apply to. Our requirements at UEA are a 3.3 GPA as well as three AP or IB exams or an SAT or ACT exam at the scores listed there, which is about a 1280 or a 27 plus. Um, if you do have a subject specific requirement, we do require an AP examination in that specific subject. We look for your essay to have demonstrated academic interest, which talks about what you've done to prepare for the course, why you want to go into it, and potentially if you know what you want to do afterwards, you can explain that as well. And some of our courses may require interviews, auditions, or portfolios, although that's pretty few and far between. 
Our costs for 2021 start at about 24,000 US dollars for our non-lab courses and go up from there. And the cost of living, which is set by the government is about 13,000 US dollars for the nine months that you're on campus. However, I will say in Norwich and at UEA, you can probably live more affordably than this, but this just gives you a good idea of what you may want to budget for. We do offer some scholarships. There's an automatic one at 4,000 pounds for just the first year if you do get an offer from us. You can apply by writing two short essays for up to 8,000 pounds per year. Um, so that's obviously a great scholarship to be getting and reduces the cost by about half. Some scholarships are by course, however, that's more likely for postgraduate students. Um, and then you can also have music and sports scholarship options too. Most UK universities are FAFSA loan eligible, so you can bring those over if your family um, is able to receive those. And then students are able to work on their tier four student visa, either 20 hours while they're in courses or 40 hours during any breaks. Please do connect with us. We also do have a student ambassador named Nicole who's from California. She's in her final year, but probably staying on for a master's degree with us. So we're excited about that. And um, these are all the social media channels. And also you're more than welcome to reach out to me directly. Again, my name is Alana and I'm happy to help you with anything that you need. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alana, for sharing a little bit more about University of East Anglia. Uh, from here, we'll head from Norwich back to London and we will welcome Kingston University London. Hello, I hope everyone can hear me. Yep, we can hear you. Yeah, okay, cool. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Nadia Palmer from Kingston University in London. Sorry. Hello, apologies about that. <laughs> Having a few technical issues here, yeah. Okay, hi. So I'm Nadia Palmer from Kingston University in London, and I will be telling you a bit today about um, Kingston University. Um, so to start with, the university teaches a range of subjects, and what I can say is the ones you see on screen are just a snapshot of what we offer at Kingston. Um, so as you can see, it's quite a range, ranging from business to the creative arts to engineering. Um, I would also encourage you to have a look on our website, which I will display later, and also take a virtual tour of our campus. Okay, so location-wise, we're quite blessed in terms of where we're located. We're 25 minutes from central London, um, but also um, we benefit from a cheaper cost of living, um, being um, zone six, travel zone six. Um, it's one of the safest areas of, um, of the country. Um, Kingston is a fun student town, lots of shops, cafes, cinemas. Um, we're quite lucky also to be quite close to um, Richmond Park and Bushy Park, which are, are both very green areas of, um, of London. So for those students who actually like the outdoor life, I think Kingston is very well placed for that. Um, in addition to that, we've got places like Hampton Court Palace, um, we are actually one of the four royal boroughs in London, which pretty much means that, um, okay, probably I should say, say to you that the town was named after um, 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 King's Town because um, some of our oldest kings used to be crowned here. Um, so in terms of um, student life, um, there are lots of um, shopping, cafes, pubs, cinemas. It's also, it's also one of the safest areas of London. So um, the Metropolitan Police, which is the police um, authority in London, um, conduct a survey once a year uh, with, with regards to crime. And um, Kingston always comes up as one of the safest areas uh, um, in, in and around London. So in terms of student life in London, um, as some of my colleagues have already said, um, there are over 100,000 international students based in London, some from about, well, pretty much from about 190 nations. It's a very diverse capital, very cosmopolitan. It's ranked um, number three in terms of the best city worldwide, and it's home to lots and lots of graduate employers. 
Okay, these are some of the academic benefits of studying in London. As we can see, it's pretty much um, the seat of global academia, if I can call it that. Many world discoveries were made in London. Um, I think also some of the key benefits as well in terms of um, um, studying in London is that, is that the U UK um, undergraduate degree is three years compared to four years in other parts of the world. Also master's degrees are one years. Um, one year, sorry. Um, in terms of um, electives, so there is no general requirement for your elective. And um, generally for the three year degree, it tends to be um, um, on a particular subject or particular range of subjects. Um, London is great for traveling. So you can travel to all parts of the world from, from London. Um, and also all our degrees are quite internationally recognized. Um, Kingston University uh, as well does um, offer FAFSA eligibility. Um, so in terms of our master's degrees, bachelor's degrees and foundation degrees, students um, can actually um, um, transfer their FAFSA. Um, for those students, because what you find, there are some courses which um, FAFSA cannot be used for. And um, for those, you, you ha do have access to things like Sally May and veterans um, um, funding. So at Kingston, we do have um, uh, a, um, some scholarships available, and those are available to any undergraduate student. but um, you should um, have an offer with us before you can become eligible for the scholarship. Um, applications must be submitted by the 31st of May. So if you are planning to come this year, then by all means, I do encourage you to apply as soon as possible. And we do, also, we do also offer family bursaries. So um, if you do have a family member who studied here, also if you have completed a summer program with us here in Kingston, then you will be eligible for that. So in terms of op opportunities at Kingston, as you can see there, there are quite a range of opportunities available for our students. So range from volunteering opportunities to various clubs and societies, um, sports clubs, et cetera, et cetera. And in fact, the local area is quite good for um, other for sporting events. So if you are say into things like um, 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 water events, sporting event, boating events, our location, which is pretty much on the Thames, provides a great opportunity to be able to do that. Um, we do, as part of our course, uh, a part of our courses offer free entrepreneurship workshops, um, things like um, competitions, events, et cetera, et cetera, which pretty much getting, get our students to start thinking in an entrepreneurial manner. So uh, in terms of how to contact us, um, that's um, our generic um, email address, which um, by all means you can use, or you can also, um, contact us via Facebook. Um, so if you scan those right now or, or via Instagram, um, these are all various ways that um, we can be contacted. Um, we do also encourage you to join um, our um, Facebook group because then you get to have, you have the opportunity of interacting with other students, you know, like yourselves who might be thinking about coming to London. Okay. Thank you. I will put my, my contact details in the chat. Um, so um, do send me any questions if you've got any questions and look forward to chatting later. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit more about Kingston University London. Uh, next up, we have York St. John University. Forgive me, York St. John University. Hi, thank you. <laughs> So hi, I'm Becca, and I am the regional. Oh, it's gone right to the end of the presentation. <laughs> and I'm the regional manager for the Americas at York St. John University. Um, so before I tell you all about the university, I'd just like to give you a little bit of information about where we're located, um, because York is a city that people outside of the UK might not necessarily have heard of before. So we're located in the northeast of England. Um, we're about two hours north of London on the train, and about two and a half hours south of Edinburgh. So we're kind of on the train line directly up from London to Scotland. So it's very easy to get around from where we're located. We were founded in 1841. So we're one of the older institutions within the UK. 
and we were originally founded as a teacher training college, but we've now expanded to over 200 different programs. Around 140 of those are available for bachelor degrees and the other 60 would be available for postgraduate students. We have on in a typical year around 6,500 students with about five to 10% of those coming in as international students. As an institution, we really focus on employability of our graduates and we're in the UK top 25 for graduate outcomes with 97% of our graduates being employed or in full-time study within six months of graduating. We do this to kind of integrate employability throughout all of our programmes. So we do have options for placement years, but we also have industry experts who will come in and speak to you. We have a lot of practical learning integrated within our programmes. So you will have times in labs, you'll have time in performance suites. If you're in a arts-based programme, you'll have studio time to really enhance the skills that you'll need to succeed when you get into the workplace. Outside of your studies, we also have a lot of different activities available for you to enjoy. We have 60 different societies and clubs. A lot of those would be sports, which compete in the Bucks Sports League within the UK. And for certain programmes, we also have the option to do a dual enro enrolment where you study your bachelor's degree in the morning and then you take part in coaching with a soccer academy in the afternoon and are coached by former Premier League footballers. So something else that we really like to emphasise within the university is the personalised experience that you'll get. By being one of the smaller universities within the UK, um, we really like to share that our students are known by name, by all of their lecturers. They're not just a sort of face in a crowd. And you can see that in this quote here that Tim has about his experience with us. Every student will have an individual tutor from the moment that they start with us until the moment that they graduate. You'll typically be in quite small class sizes and just supported throughout every step of the journey. Specifically as an international student, we have a dedicated team who their whole day-to-day -day work is just to ensure that everything runs smoothly for you as a international student. They'll help you with everything from setting up your bank account when you arrive in the UK, to running activities to help you integrate into the community and running trips out to places that you might not be able to get to in the UK without a car to really help you make the most of your experience with us. We also rank 10th in the UK for teaching quality and 27th for student satisfaction, which we feel really reflects that what we're doing is working. Students are really loving their time with us. So as I said, we have quite a large range of degrees available. Um, we're split into five different schools and these are just a sample of some of the most popular programmes that we have available. Um, some of them are very practical based, so Biomed um, is one of our top ranking programmes at the university, where you will have a lot of lab time and a lot of our students go on to work in highly skilled biomedical professions. Um, for example, some of our recent graduates in roles where they were helping with the shift in vaccine distributions, they're working in sites which were creating vaccines while the core labs were working on COVID vaccines. Most of our courses also have the option to do an add-on foundation year, which is run by us rather than an external provider. That would make your course up to four years, um, but it's for students who may need a little bit of extra support to get onto that programme and really succeed on it. So the city of York is incredibly beautiful. It's one of the most historic cities in the UK, and it's very often a popular tourist destination. So our campus is located about five minutes from the city walls by, walk, by walking, um, so we're very central. And from our campus, you can actually see the York Minster, which is a 15th century cathedral where all of our students actually get to graduate inside at the end of their experience. However, just because we're a more historic institution doesn't mean that the facilities are antiquated. We have over the past 10 years invested over 100 million in improving our campus and facilities, making sure that everything is really modern and up to standard, including during the lockdowns in the UK, we have increased the Wi-Fi capacity on campus so that everywhere has really top notch, top of the range Wi-Fi currently. We offer guaranteed accommodation, single occupancy bedrooms to all our first years, and that will all be within a 20 minute walk from campus. Um, and for those, you would have an option, depending on your budget, whether you want to have a fully private studio apartment, 
whether you want to have shared living facilities like a kitchen and, and a bathroom with your roommates, depending on what it is that you're budgeting for. York itself, um, as I mentioned, it's very well located. It's quite easy to get into London, get to Scotland. It's about two, two and a half hours from Manchester as well, which is another big city. Um, and there's a lot of history there too. It's also very friendly and known to be one of the safest cities in the UK. This is just a quick overview of our tuition. Um, we do have scholarships available for all international students. We can accept US federal loans and the cost of living is around 800 to 900 pounds. These are our entry requirements, um, which I will send to anybody who is interested in those. And I will just put my email on the screen for people to um, look at, take a screenshot, and I'll also put it in the chat for you later. So thank you very much for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Becca, for sharing a little bit more about York St. John University. Uh, before we head to our final institution of the session, I'm going to once again make a quick plug for that Q&A. So thank you to those of you who have already been taking advantage of the Q&A to ask questions of our presenters. But I do want to make sure that everyone knows that you can send your questions at any point. No need to save them for the end of the session. Uh, but now we'll head on over to our final institution, which is the University of Manchester. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Lee. I am an international officer and I represent uh, Britain's largest single site university, which is the University of Manchester. And we were established in 1824. So we have a proud history of innovation and world's firsts, some of which are listed here. So in 1917, we have Ernest Rutherford who split the atom. In uh, 48, we have Kilburn and Williams who built the world's first stored program computer. And in 57, we have Lovell who built the world's largest steerable radio telescope at Jodrell Bank. So the University of Manchester is part of the UK's Russell Group uh, and this identifies 24 world-class research intensive universities. So some students in the US understand that to be uh, the UK's version of the Ivy Leagues. It's not a direct translation, um, but it's something that can help you figure out what the Russell Group is. Uh, we have a unique vision and we are proud to boast 25 Nobel laureates amongst our staff and students. And we have two currently teaching on campus. We're the top, top UK university for two years running for social and environmental impact. Looking at some of our rankings, we are ranked 27th in the world according to the QS World Rankings. We are also sixth in the UK and eighth in Europe. And not to mention our individual programs are also highly ranked. 83% of research is judged to be world leading or internationally excellent. Again, that speaks to us being part of the Russell Group. We produce a lot of research. And we're the first choice for graduate employers in the UK. So we have our regular recruiters who come to campus and we have great relationships with. Um, these are global companies that I'm sure you've heard of. There's Jaguar, there's Apple, IBM, BBC, uh, AstraZeneca, which is always in the news every week because of the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, the bigger accounting and tax companies, there's PwC, uh, KPMG. We have several students from our engineering school. Uh, they are building Formula One cars in Monte Carlo, which I think is a pretty cool fact for some of our alumni to be doing. Some of our popular courses under our three faculties. So our three faculties are Faculty of Science and Engineering, Faculty of Biology, Medicine and Health, and then the Faculty of Humanities. And these are some of our popular courses for North American students. We have popular degrees which can be studied at the undergraduate level that includes law and medicine. But we also have these popular courses, sociology and criminology, physics and math, computer science and AI, which is obviously popular in these days, politics and international relations and creative writing. There's a great show of interest in our humanities specifically. And I'll also mention that our faculty of humanities houses our business school. So our your Manchester student experience, we are home to over 40,000 students from 160 nationalities over 10,000 international students from outside the EU are on our campus as well. So that makes us one of the most international and diverse universities in the UK. The university and the city are one of the most affordable places for students seeking a degree in the UK. If you combine the living cost for Manchester City and tuition for the University at Manchester, it comes to about or between 40,000 US dollars to 48,000 uh, US dollars that excludes the School of Medicine, which works a bit differently. 
And when it comes to your career, we offer amazing options for you at university. And once you graduate, most of our degrees will give you the option to integrate a year abroad, also known as the year in industry. You might hear this referred to as the sandwich year. It's a graduate level internship that's relevant to your degree. So the example I use is if you are a marketing student, your sandwich year is going to be a marketing job. So you'll have this internship, it will be paid and you'll be doing that for the year and it's your way of, of um, getting exposure to a field that, of your interest. Uh, you'll also have opportunities for summer internships, for volunteering, outreach programs. You might want a part-time job to sort of help you pay for your experience in, in Manchester. You're able to do that as well on your visa. You can work up to 20 hours. In general, Manchester's there to support you um, through your journey. There's multiple resources across the campus to help you across many departments. Career services is one. Um, it's exactly what you think it does. It offers you one-to-one -one appointments. Um, they can assist you with CV writing. They have available internships uh, listed that they can help you apply for. And of course, they have great connections with our alumni, which we have half a million spread out across the world doing wonderful things. Taking a look at our campus, these are small photos. I do encourage you to go to our website and see more photos. But we are located in the second largest city in the UK. And Manchester, the city, has some of its own firsts. It's the birthplace of vegetarianism, feminism, and the Industrial Revolution. Socially, the university has over 400 clubs and societies. They range from everything you would expect. Uh, there's different sports, swimming, basketball, there's debate, there's different affinity groups, and more. If you uh, are looking for something specific and it's not already offered, you can get a group of friends together and start your own society. We have an accommodation guarantee for international students and the best news there is all the rooms are single occupancy. So you'll never have to share your room. Uh, you might have to share a kitchen should you decide to select the self-catering option. And lastly, I mentioned this already, but we have had over half a million alumni in 190 countries and we're looking forward to new students joining that community. So I encourage you to visit websites, uh, our, our websites, there's multiple websites within our website and our prospectuses, which you can download from our website. These are all very useful um, and they can give you a lot of information, a better idea of what it's like to, to study and live there. And I would also encourage you to use Unibuddy. It pops up on our country pages in the bottom right corner and you can click Unibuddy and it actually helps you filter through current students through their course of study or their nationality. So you can find someone with your similar background or similar interests and actually get some firsthand information about what it's like to be a Manchester student. Lastly, here is my email address. You can get in touch. I'm happy to set up a one-to-one -one Zoom with you and we can discuss more about Manchester. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much for sharing a little bit more about the University of Manchester. At this point, I'll invite all of our college representatives to turn their video back on. And we will do a very quick lightning round uh, before we wrap up our session. So I'll give everyone another few moments here. Uh, but we can go ahead and get started. So I think with our final moment of the session, we'll have everyone go ahead and share a fun or unique fact about your institution. So I'll go ahead and start. Yeah, the, the fact that we were the first school in the world to have a Michelin star training restaurant, it wasn't something we were going for, but something that we have, it's awesome. So if you love food, you get to enjoy, you get to cook it, prepare it, everything. So it's definitely a way to make your suits get a little bit tighter. At Roehampton, we have this very fun uh, tradition. So annually, our four historical colleges on campus compete for college cups. So very similar to the house cups in the Harry Potter books and movies. So it's just something that's, you know, a fun piece of tradition and camaraderie on campus. Uh, UEA is striving to be a hedgehog friendly campus, which I think is really adorable. I think there are a few of them in the UK, but we've been given a bronze accreditation by the British Hedgehog Preservation Society. Um, so we're definitely trying to help them out as they are becoming more endangered in the UK. I think for us uh, at Kingston, it's the combination of um, London life, the buzz of London, and suburbia. So we're sort of in between London and Surrey and everything that has to offer. Beautiful riverside location, lovely green parks, as well as an exciting student town. So I think that's, that's quite unique about us. 
So we were one of the first institutions in the UK to admit women um, when we were founded Women at Loughborough University in the UK. Um, and three of our first female alumni were actually so highly renowned in the city that they have a blue history plaque set up outside of our campus to commemorate them. In Manchester, we have something called Global Week, which is where students get together and celebrate our diversity and uniqueness. And I mentioned 160 universities on our campus, so that's a lot of uh, cultures to celebrate. It's a week long and there's going to be fun festivities, food, uh, dancing, music, and you can to share in other cultures that you might not otherwise experience. Great. Yeah, thank you all so much for sharing a little bit more. I'm glad we had time to sneak a fun fact in here before we wrap up our session today. Uh, but I do want to take a moment just to say a big thank you to all of you for joining us and a big thank you to our college representatives as well, who would have thought that you would learn a little bit about hedgehog preservation in a college fair session. Um, so just a big thank you to everyone involved. I do want to make a quick note that we have a very quick four question survey that will appear on your screen as soon as this session concludes. If you don't mind taking the extra moment to fill it out, it's very helpful for us as we continue to plan events such as these. A reminder that there are two more hours of programming for you to check out and sign up for more sessions if you haven't already, and that this session was recorded and that you'll be able to view the recording at strivescan.com backslash SSDA. Uh, but thank you once again for joining. Thank you once again to our representatives, and I hope that everyone has a wonderful rest of their day.